I don't want nobody to say I did a good job. I want to say I did a great job. Good ain't good enough for me. And, and that's just how I am. And my, my kids know it, my wife know it, the players know it. Good is not good enough. I always tell them good is the enemy of great. People get good at stuff, they get settled, they get happy with it. I don't want to be good at anything I do. I want to be great at it. And, and that's all around. That's not just coaching football. That's um, developing the players. That's not just recruiting. That's everything I do, I want to be great at it. You really worked your way through in not an easy fashion. Like, nah. you didn't get some job handed to you, you know? You were a position coach in high school for a while, right? Yeah. Guys don't understand that. They, they see the finished product. Yeah. Um, and that's the same thing uh, people see with the game day. And I mean, that's just how life is. People see the finished product. I started off as a volunteer coach. I volunteered and helped quarterbacks, and then I coached receivers. I took a little bit of time off, and I, then I became an OC. Then I became the head coach, and then that was a process because my first year, my first game, my first year, we got beat by 40 points. <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh. And then, but my guys trusted me. We, we stayed the course, and we had a good season. That team, that school hadn't been to playoffs in a long time. What, what school? Uh, Cedar Grove High School. Yep. So they were very, very successful, not because of the athletes, but just because of the structure and mm. the, the area and the coaching. You know, it, it's hard it's, in that area. It's still difficult just because of financially they don't have a lot of money to pay the coaches and the facilities and stuff, but I found a way to do it. That first year we made the playoffs. I think we got to the second round. Next year, third round. Next year, championship. Next year, I think we played in the game and lost to the team that won the championship. Next year, we won the championship again. And once you get expectation and set a level, um, the kids are responding to it. I tell people all the time, kids, we, we don't give kids enough credit. People say like, uh, I don't know if you can do that. They can do it. You just don't think they can do it, so you don't set that goal for them. If you set the goals and expectations for kids, they reach them most likely. Man, that's powerful because I, like as a coach and just having coach kids, you take your guys or girls mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, that person's capable of this and you mm -hmm. make all the pieces kind of fit, yeah. right? And maybe you don't spend enough time like, how much better can you get them? You put them in what, the box. Yeah, what, exactly. Like, this is what they can do. Mm -hmm. that's, that's but a, they can achieve more than they believe yeah. if you make them believe they can do yeah, it. Yeah, mind's a powerful thing. So yeah. I tell guys all the time, mind's a powerful thing. And I watch stuff on, I show them some stuff on TV where they have people hold their breath for un unbelievable amounts of time and mental stuff that people can do. Once you put your mind to it, Navy SEALs and stuff people that stuff people do, it's amazing what you can do if you really set your mind to it. So the guys, they understand like, I mean, you, 10 years ago when they first started playing, I tell them all the time, I say, go back to middle school. When you was coming into high school, you wanted to just be on the varsity team. And you got on varsity, you want to play. You play, you want to start. You start, you want to go to college. You want to go to college, I want to go to, to Division One. I. I get Division One offers, I want to go to Power Five. I get Power Five, I want SEC. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. So, if, what, if just imagine if you had put your mind on SEC from the beginning. Yeah. How far along you would have yeah. been. When you started doing the class, the master's classes and all that stuff to, to uh, you know, get your your coaching in high school going, mm -hmm. I mean, what was your ultimate goal? Did you have one at that time? Or was it just to become, become a coach? You didn't know where it was going to go. I, I was already working there, so I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be the head coach. Um, you wanted to be a head coach? I wanted to be a head coach. At high school uh, level? At high school level. And I eventually, once I got it, and it was funny, then, like I said that, yeah. and I became a head coach. Yeah. Honestly, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. To become a head coach? To become, well, to coach at the head coach level. Yeah. People always say, like, man, oh, you, you work right. so, but once I get into something and you start doing it, I don't know how much work I'm doing. I just do what has to be done. Yeah. Like, I mean. And I, you like it. And I enjoy it because yeah. I know what's going to result. The weight room was bad. I redid the whole weight room on my own. Yeah, I want to hear about, I was going to go there next. Yeah, like it was. What you did at mm. this high school that, that you know, you just, you described the struggles. Like, take me behind the scenes and what was going on. Yeah, like, I try to take a step back and remember this for a second. Man, and it's funny you said that. I'm writing a book right now about this stuff because that's how yeah. crazy it is. Um, when I started off, first of all, we didn't have lights. We had no lights. And we became a good team. It was worse because without no lights, you're practicing after daylight saving. So the better you do, the, the darker it's getting as you play. 
For the light saving, it's getting dark at 5.30. We used to have to get people on the hill to cut the lights on, right? But then people got tired of doing that. So I did something crazy. What, what they put? Put the lights on so we can see the practice. Like car lights? Car lights, I mean practice. So I would have to do. No, this can't be. This can't. That's true. I would do pass this game. This is like 2014, 2015? Yeah. I would do pass game at the beginning of practice. Georgia hurt high fingers. school football. Yeah. yeah. I would do pass game at the beginning. So I wouldn't hurt their hands or anything. Because you're throwing the ball. You can't see the. So after, after I do run game, so you can hand the ball off because you can't see the ball anymore. All right? I would do things like this, right? I would do. So we, we got good, and what's crazy about it, the stuff that you do, you don't think about it. I had neon jerseys. I put neon jerseys on people with the ball against team, certain teams. So let's say we play a team in the option. I put neon jerseys on the quarterback, neon jerseys on the running back, neon jerseys on the wing. All right? And it helped us because you just key your person. They start teaching my guys, look at that person. I was doing it so they can see the people. <laughs> but then I thought about it, I said, that's working. I would have to wet the field. Our field was dirt. I would have to wet the field so the dirt won't get, you know how dirt, dirt coming from your nose, kids can't breathe. Kids would ask me, I would wet the field up. Before practice, I, and the, the water wasn't on the field. The water was 150 yards away, so I had to buy cheap hoses to run water and wet the field up before the kids go out there, so the mud wouldn't fly, so the dirt wouldn't fly. This is a movie. Yeah, it's, it's, this it's, is not. This is just stuff that that yeah. you can't. Like most people, they get that job and they're like, and you were an assistant coach before. Yeah. At the same school. And I knew it was coming. And I still did it, huh? <laughs> So it was crazy. The better you do, I would have to borrow tape. So we would run out of tape. They give us a certain amount of tape at the beginning of the season, wrist tape and ankle tape and all that stuff. And I would have to borrow tape from teams that didn't make the playoffs because we would run out of tape. Holy smokes. <laughs> so you guys, you do all that, and you, and you win two state champions. So what, how did it get better? Did, it, did you eventually end up with better grass? Did you end up with lights? Did you end up what? Still don't have lights. They got turf after I left. Okay. They turfed all the fields in the county, though. They got turf after I left. Um, I redid the weight room. Uh, so uh, Deshaun Watson's high school, um, Gainesville High School, I knew the coach. And uh, Deshaun decided to redo the weight room. So they had a weight room. They had uh, new, got, getting new equipment and stuff. Yeah. And they had just redid it like four years before that. But Deshaun wanted to redo it. So I ended up talking to the coach, and he said, uh, I said, man, we need some weight room stuff so bad. We had two benches, two squat racks. The squat rack was so dangerous, it was rocking, moving, and all that stuff, and it was it was ridiculous. So uh, I ended up talking to him. He was like, man, um, I talked to Deshaun. I knew some guys who knew Deshaun, so I said, man, ask him uh, what's over there. He said, I don't care. So the coach said, if y'all can move the stuff and get it broken down, pay for it to get broken down and all that stuff, y'all can have it. It was red. We blew, we blew and, and, and Columbia blew, and it was red. So, me and two, three of my coaches, Renly U-Haul, drove over to Gainesville. The people broke it down. They broke it down. They would not put it on the U-Haul for us. They said, we can't put it on the U-Haul. That's liabilities. We can't do that. We moved 10 racks, benches, weights. We moved all this stuff around. And that was in the morning. One of them had to go fly out for a cruise or something like that, go on a cruise like 3 o'clock. So, he had to leave. He was almost late for that. We had to drive back up. I took all the stuff and took to a co one of the coach kids. Dad, kid's dad was a painter. He got the stuff and painted it for me, and we got it. We moved it back in. We had to get somebody to come break it, cook it all up, because we ain't had equipment to all the stuff. And yeah. Now the weight room, our weight room was the best weight room in the county probably after that. But it, I mean, paid. I spent probably ten thousand dollars of my own money just getting the equipment, painting it, tangering. The at least, yeah. you know. I that's a, that's just a passion that you had right there. Yeah, I for, knew for that whole thing. That's what like what was in, what were you feeling about doing all that? Like what was I had I had what, seen why did it, it mean man. so much to you? I had seen it cuz uh I had friends, I had coaches that uh at other schools I had coaches that like Blessed Trinity and they had great facilities. I had coaches at Marist which, which is um a school coaches at great different schools I would go to and I would see what they had and see the resources they had and, and you would see stuff they were doing and I'm like our guys are doing well without it, which ain't fair. So what can I do about it? And in my mind, I mean, I had to do something about it. So I said, okay, if I can get them a nice weight room, I can hold them accountable now. So I got the weight room, fixed it up. I bought some TVs and mounted them up. And got a system, a, a free system where you can put timers on it. And uh, I had a guy named uh, Coach Martin. He was real good with technology and that was all his job was. He set it all up and I mean, they started going from there. Our guys, I mean, they were excited about going to the weight room, taking pictures in there. They were just all excited about it. So, Not one of those things 
would anybody say they dreamed about when it came to becoming a head coach? No. None of that. Re- I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't have anything to do with coaching, but it pretty much has nothing to do with coaching in football. Yeah. That has to do with just getting something done. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. You've got to want to get it done, man. Because if you start thinking about it. That is such a great story. Yeah, man. It's just. I mean, terrible circumstance, but mm-hmm. but you must be so proud. I must have made you feel so good. What did it look like as you step back and you see that? What? How did the kids react, and what did you see from them when this started to happen? Man, it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing because uh, it started more things happening. So I, I went there, and then uh, once I did that, our locker room is, like, downstairs, and it's we call it the dungeon because it's down. But the walls were all, you know, the school colors they use, like a brownish white. And it's all, mm. So I started off, um, I can't get in trouble for this now, so it's good. I started <laughs> off, I would, I started off painting the walls. Yeah. And the county was like, you can't paint them because you're not supposed to change anything. Right. But the walls were so horrible. The kids was, I mean, right. the whole atmosphere was horrible. Downer. So I started off, the kids would get consequences. When you get in trouble, you had to paint a section because I wanted to get it painted I had consequences but then it started looking good so kids started volunteering to do it because they wanted to look good yeah so they said coach you want us to pop? we paint the hall so you want to paint the locker room too I said yeah we're going to paint the locker room too we're going to paint certain spots then they got to a point where they said okay we're going to do this right so it just started building off of it start building I mean and it, it became a community thing so once we start doing stuff and it, it's crazy how it has to be People don't want to help you until you already help yourself a lot and start getting ahead. So once we start doing more and more stuff, everybody start wanting to help a little more. And it took us from, from being, not having anything to at least be able to compete with having some stuff. That's another great point. People that want help, you got to show yeah. some investment on your own. Yeah. And, then, and then people are willing to like, oh yeah. Yeah, you yeah, start getting help everywhere. That's a good, that's a good yeah. call. Somebody's helping there. Yeah. So, that's a that's just a phenomenal story that you won two state championships. Like, it, how big is the school? Like, what classification? Three A school. Three, yeah. We have about uh, maybe eight hundred to a thousand kids. Okay. We start off with more. Um, Ninth through twelfth or tenth through twelfth. Yeah. And it's not a it, it's not a big school, but one thing I can say about it, man, and I tell people all the time, you never believe it till you get there. It's it's a big family. Great teachers, they care about the kids. Yeah. It's one of those areas yeah, where sure. you got to care because it's, I mean, it ain't, yeah. it ain't no bad area, but it's not the best areas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Inner city kids, it's, um, I mean, I think we like 99% free and reduced lunch at the school. Wow. So all the kids ate free, but it was like a, it's, it's a family atmosphere. Teachers would do anything I wanted them to do. I changed the whole practice didn't start until 4.30. We had study hall immediately after school. Teachers loved it. They wanted to stay to help the kids. I started changing things like that academically, and they didn't lift weights during the season before I got there. So I started doing weight rooms on certain days, and we had. I changed my schedule. Crazy enough, and, and people laugh at me about this all the time. I coach high school ball, and most coaches have like uh, periods off or something like that. I didn't. My schedule was the exact same as every other teacher. A matter of fact, I didn't have a planning period. I took my planning period and I said I don't want one. I want to use my get my guys in another class so I can help them let them lift weights and have film sessions. So we had four blocks. And I usually had the last one off. I got a class. I said, "Give me a class." He's only put my football players in there. So I didn't have a period off. I had work all day every day. You taught all day and coach. All day. What kind? Of, what classes were? So I had PE. So I had, I had yeah. PE at the time. Yeah. And that was important for me because I taught math before. Right. So I had to go get my certification in PE when I came to head coach, which worked out well. It worked out really well because my wife was also a PE teacher. So she was in the in the gym with me most times. So that helped me out a lot. If it wasn't for her, I couldn't do things how I wanted to do it. Because one big thing I was one thing I was big on too is when it came to recruiting and stuff. I had my stuff really organized when coaches come in. Have a computer here, have a list of the guys already set. I do boop boop, press it. But I would have to walk the coaches around the school and show them where the kids work out and show them different things. So. My wife would watch my class for a few minutes while I do it. The principal would say, okay, I understand coaches, recruiting season, you can do it this way. So it was, like I said, it was a family, it was a family atmosphere, man, so. That's so cool, we haven't even talked about you coaching track. Yeah. You coached track there too? I loved it, I, I, man. And you guys won? Oh, we was really good. A couple states? Yeah, um, track, so track is funny. 
I ran track in high school. In college, I didn't run track, and, and I always liked track because my wife and I like. I learned about it from her. I always, whenever I get into something, like I said, I just learn it. I want to learn more and more from her. So, I think it was a year before my first year or my first year coaching track, because that was one of my requirements. When they asked me to um, be the head coach, I said, I got to be the AD and I got to coach track. They're like, you, you want to do that? I was like, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I knew. And I'll get to that in a minute, but I knew some things that I had to do in order to do that. So I started coaching track. I think my first year, my wife, the girls won a state championship, right? And they were joking about it. They said, your wife won a state championship, so you got to sleep on the chair until you win one. So my first year, she won a state championship, and we were running up. And next year, I won. They didn't win. They were like third. The next year, I won. The next year, I won. The next year, I won. So I think we went run up first year and we went four in a row. And I mean, that's I so loved cool. it. But I made some rules. And that's why I want to be the track coach and the head football coach. I mean, the track coach and the athletic director because by being the athletic director, I control where my coaches was at. So my defensive coordinator was the head basketball coach. So no players can get away from me. And I can give him another stipend, honestly. I can pay him more money. My O line coach, my wrestling coach, my DB coach coached baseball. So all my coaches were doing something else, so the kids couldn't get away from me. And every kid who went in another sport had to run track. If you ain't playing another sport, you had to run track. We would go to track meet with 50 kids, 55 kids. I have I have two buses. We have a bus for the girls. I have some of the guys on there. I have another bus for the guys. We had so many guys we couldn't even buy uniforms. I go, I go to Walmart and get black shirts, and they get wearing some shorts. They have everybody having a black shirt. We go to track and go to track meets. But well, let's back up a little bit. How'd you how'd you grow up? How'd you get into sports? How'd you end up? all the way to becoming a, a high school coach. Let's work through this a little bit. You played sports growing up. Yeah, where, where are you from? Sports. I'm from uh, South Carolina. I, I really grew up in South Carolina. Yeah. I got ties to the Florida, Miami, Florida, and all that good stuff. But South Carolina's my roots. Um, my, uh, my dad was really stern, you know, really stern. Um, he, he believed in work for what you wanted, uh, and I complained about it. So I started playing ball, I think I was 10 years old. And um, the funny thing was I played running back because I wanted to play running back. But I was one of those guys, I really understood the game and I was a quarterback by nature, but I didn't know it. I was telling nobody where to line up and telling everybody where to go and How'd what to do. How'd you know that stuff? I just love, I just love, anything I get into, I just get into Did it like wholeheartedly. you see it on TV or yeah. you like, but then you really started like paying attention to yeah. it? Yeah, and I was like a ball boy with my older brother. He was okay. like five years older than me, so I would go to practices with him and stand on the sideline. I was like a water boy and I would watch them and I would hear the coach and I'm like, why are you doing that? And I started learning the game. So when I started playing, it was like, I'm trying to tell everybody what to do. And that just developed. My dad, I remember it good. One day after, uh, after practice, it's a crazy story. And like I said, my dad was real stern. We leave in practice and I play running back. My dad say, you're a quarterback. And I said, I want to play quarterback. And um, you didn't really respond. My dad say something. You said, yes, sir, no, sir. And I kind of got an attitude. And he said, uh, he said, you got a problem? I said, I don't. He said, if you got a problem, get out and walk. I said, I'll get out there. He let me out on the side of the road. I walked like three miles. I had to walk all the way home. He said, you can walk. If you, you want to play quarterback? I want to play running back. You want to play running back? I want to play quarterback, yeah. <laughs> you weren't ready to play quarterback. Because when you little league, you're the quarterback don't run the yeah. ball. The running yeah. back run the ball. No, quarterback can't no, get no. Uh, look, like you football, you need a quarterback who can get the snap and hand it to the running back. Exactly. So I want the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and get the and get the snap count right and make sure everybody's set. Yeah, you're just a guy yeah. who gives the ball to everybody else. Yeah, and read maybe the play off the wristband or yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, you're not really throwing the ball. I mean, nah. sometimes a quarterback can run the ball. No, nah, you, 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 you wanted ball. to be the guy. I want to be the guy. And you were like, that's the running back yeah, spot. I want the ball. But and he said we want to move you to quarterback and you, you didn't like it so you had to walk home. Yeah, he said <laughs> that's hilarious. He said you better get out. <laughs> can you imagine that happening in today's world? That would be like, yeah, uh, be like headline news. <laughs> oh yeah, times change. <laughs> it didn't really happen. I don't know. I don't know if I can tell that. <laughs> My daddy might get in trouble. Huh? <laughs> I, mean, I think we're good on that. I think this, I think we're good. Um, but what did you have? I'm guessing. I don't know. Did you have a bunch of? Video games and Xbox and all that stuff in your house. What'd you was nah. football your fun? That's our fun. We go outside. You wake up in the morning, my dad said, Yeah, you're going outside. You come back in at 12. We uh, we ate peach plums outside, we drink water out the faucet. When you come back in, you you in. So you come back in the house, you got, you got to work in the house, you got to clean up, do stuff. So we go outside and stay outside the whole day. We ain't trying to come back in. 
That's so good. good. I mean, we, Man, such a parenting lesson in here for. Yeah. We didn't have one game. My son ain't got a game now. World. We didn't have video games. My son don't even have one. How did you deal with kids in college now? Because a lot of them don't don't come here like that. No, and how do you how do you figure that out? Because it's not what you're from. No, it, it's times have changed. Yeah, but you can find the right kids with the right mentality. Now you might not find kids that don't have video games, but I recruited kids that social media is like how important it is now. Some of them don't even realize it. So I have to tell them like, okay, I want you to get a Twitter. I want you to be involved in it because they really don't care about all that stuff. Yeah. They just want to play ball and be successful at it. So Which that's kind of like rather, the same thing it was before. You'd rather have to teach them maybe how to build their brand and they know about that, but they don't know about competing or, or like how to exactly. work hard or how to overcome adversity. And right? they, still, they still out there. The great ones still out there. But I don't want to say the great ones, but the kids like that, that I look for, yeah. they're out there somewhere. You guys got to find them. Yeah. So we go back to your dad makes you walk home, and did you, by the time you walked three miles at 10 or so, did you figure out maybe I'll just, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll move to quarterback? Yeah, I ended up playing quarterback. <laughs> that's what a three mile walk could do for I could do that a little easier. It could have said the easy way, but yeah. you want to do it the hard way, the easy way. That's one of those times you learn, like, I'd rather do it the easy way. And he wanted that, why? Because he knew I was, it, was, it was good for me. I mean, I played quarterback all through high school, played quarterback in college. I mean, it was, I was a natural leader. And at the time, I wouldn't, I didn't know it, but I was blessed with it. I was a natural leader. Everybody wanted to follow what I did. Everybody, I mean, I just did stuff the right way. So he knew I was a quarterback and he said, just, I mean, I was already doing it. I was lining everybody up, telling everybody what to do. So he's like, if you're going to do that, you might as well be a quarterback. He had the vision uh, yeah. for, the, for the future. Which, like most parents do. That's right. And, <laughs> and, and most kids don't see it. Um, and that's the way we all were, yeah. you know? Um, so, so you moved to quarterback and then your career you know, you go into high school, you start playing well. Yeah, you know, played well, Tell me man. about your high school um, career. You end up playing in college. Man, uh, high school went well. Um, my sophomore year I started, and they combined schools the next year. We had a guy named Orlando Hudson who was a very, very good football player. He played up playing, he was regular in baseball. He was playing 10 years in major leagues. Um, good baseball player, but he played quarterback my junior year. My senior year, I, got, I started. Had a great season, I think I was like, Top two in the state. At the time, a guy named Willie Dantzler played for Clemson. I think he led the state in the yards total, but I was like second in the state. And ended up going to Tennessee State because a lot of schools wanted me to move to receiver. So I wanted to play quarterback. By the end, I wanted to be quarterback. I went to Tennessee State and played quarterback. Went well. We won championships and went well. Um, that's how I got my first job in Georgia. The head coach at Cedar Grove High School was one of my college coaches at Tennessee State. And he said, me, it was the same situation. I didn't really want to coach. I wanted to do something in business information. I said, I want to sit in the office and I don't want to deal with nobody. I want to do my work and go home. And he was like, nah, you're a coach. I tried it. I volunteered for a year. It went well. Um, volunteered another year. He said, man, you might as well just coach football. And the thing I look up, is that what I said I wasn't going to do? I said I wasn't going to teach and I wasn't going to coach and I wasn't going to live in Atlanta. I ended up living in Atlanta, <laughs> teaching and coaching. <laughs> How, how this seems like a theme in your life. <laughs> yeah. You don't know you don't know what you're best at. Nope. You did or you it, didn't. And, and what's crazy about it is, um, we talk about uh, I, I'm I'm a I have an idea of what I want. I'm a planner. I plan everything yeah. and have an idea yeah. of what I want. But I do listen to wisdom. So um I think that's very important. I got people who I listen to all the time, people I talk to. I still talk to the coach now, um, probably weekly. And because Pippen is one of those guys who just wise. He got wisdom. You talk yeah. to him and he, he, you just listen to him and sit around him and you can hear the wisdom coming out of him. So I do listen to wisdom. I have my own ideas, but they can change, especially when you're talking to the right kind of people, right people. The, I, I like the saying, you know, don't try to be right, try to get it right. Yeah. That's, that's what you're talking about. Exactly. Um, and it's funny because a lot, of, a lot of people, when they come out of college, we don't really know what we want to do. No. When people look at you and hey, if you could do anything in the world, what would you do? It's a hard question to answer it is. for a lot of people. I'm sure you deal with that as a coach, you yeah. know, like helping helping young men understand, oh, yeah. like well, they, they, they don't know what they want. Or, hey, it's okay to not be the starter this year. Yeah. And, and Has that helped you with them and that those kind of things, oh, that, yeah. y your journey? Yeah, it helped help a lot because they always, I mean, every kid who comes into to football at this level, not every kid, but majority of them want to be an NFL football player. They want to go to the next level. And they always ask me, Coach, you didn't want to go to the NFL? 
my goal when I was coming up was to be successful and be a businessman. I always like watching TV and see somebody with a suit on, with a nice briefcase, and get out of the car and somebody open the door for him. That was like an image or a dream for me. Like that's what I saw. That's what I wanted to do. So I didn't know how I was going to do it. At the time, I was just I thought you had to be a businessman to do it, and I, that's what I majored in, and that's what I saw. So for them, I try to guide them and try to give them all the avenues. Because when I was coming up, we didn't have a lot. I didn't see everything. The more you see, the more you get to open your mind, the more opportunities you have. And now kids are blessed with a lot of that. Even with social media and TV, and you get to see way more successful people. And um, for our guys, I try to expose them to everything. And, and same thing with my kids. I try to expose them to everything. The more you see, the more you, you open your mind and the more successful you can be. So you kind of mentioned how you how you got into coaching. So you were at Tennessee State. How'd that go? And how'd you end up? How'd your career end up finishing? And how'd you end up making that move? It finished well, man. Um, when I finished uh, school, uh, I ended up leaving and going to Fayetteville State for a year. I went there for a year, and it went well and all that good stuff, and got my degree from there. And um, uh, after college, I played arena ball for a little while. Okay. I had a plan, like I said. I said I'm gonna play three years. If it don't go well, I'm done with it. I'm not okay. gonna. I'm not gonna be, be the guy who, you know, keep reaching for it, keep reaching for it. And then um, at the time, my uh, wife was training for uh, Olympic trials, so she was good in track. So we, that's how we ended up in Atlanta. And um, that's how I ended up coaching. So I started coaching there and I started volunteering because you know the seasons were opposite. The arena starts in like February, March and yep. other seasons. So I was doing coaching in one season, playing in the next season. And I said, I got two more years, and it didn't work how I wanted to work, so I started coaching full time, and I ended up going back to school and getting my master's in education and master's in math and all that good stuff, and it just kept going from it's there. It's a lot of work. Yeah, you know, and, and when you're doing it, when you have a goal in mind, you don't even know what you, you don't know the work you're doing. You're just getting it done. You're just getting it done, man. I would, I would, amazingly, I would volunteer coach. I was teaching at an elementary school. I would get out of work at like three o'clock. I would go to practice from 3.15 to like 4.30 or 5 o'clock. I would have a class at 6 o'clock. I'd drive downtown Atlanta at 6 and go to class. I did that for a year. And then the next year, I took a year off to finish my master's. I started coaching for a year and then went back. Because at the time, I was just a receiver's coach. And I said, uh, it wasn't fair for me to be missing practice and leaving practice for the guys because I just didn't feel good about it, leaving and coming when I could mm -hmm. come and all that stuff. So I took a year off. And when I went back, it, I was the... Uh, Came back and was the OC. That went well. Um, and then the head coach always told me, like, you're so detail-oriented and how you do stuff, you're going to be the head coach, he said, and you're going to be successful. He said, I want you to do one thing for me. He always told me, don't do it my way, do it your way. And that's one of my big things. So he always told me, like, when you get the opportunity, don't do it my way, do it your way. And that's what I did. You eventually go to Georgia State, mm -hmm. and, and you were there a year before – you got to Arkansas. How did you end up leaving there to go to Georgia State? Um, I met Coach um, at, uh, I think they had like a, they always do a thing in Macon where all the uh, region champions for the state of Georgia, they go down there. And a lot of the high school, I mean, a lot of the college coaches always go to it because it's a chance to talk to high school coaches. So I had been in Atlanta all that time and I met Coach Miles here at Georgia State and I met the head coach who was there then. And I met him for 10 minutes. And we talked and talked football and talked about some different things. And uh, that was uh, maybe six months before. So then um, I was on my way to track practice. I think it was February. And we had just started. We started getting them uh, distance in, trying to get a base. So um, I was walking out, getting to walk out, and the phone rang. I saw the number, and I was like, it didn't have a name on it. Answer the phone. I like, hey, Coach. Uh, Started so talking to me, he asked me, he said, uh, he said, Coach, you ever thought about coaching? Uh, we started talking, he got to the point, he said, you ever thought about coaching college football? I said, man, I think about it all the time. It's one of my goals, but it has to be the right opportunity. And he's like, uh, asking about Georgia State, I was like, that'd be a great opportunity. He said, well, I can't promise you anything, but I just want to meet with you or whatever, and I'd like to get them, sit down with you and talk to you. He said, uh, can you come? When can you come? Can you come now? I was like, yeah, I had track practice. He said, can you come now? I was like, I called my wife, she got a cover on it. He's like, no, don't worry about it right now. Come tomorrow. He said, just come down, we'll talk. He said, you ain't got to, it ain't no interview, ain't no big deal. You got to do all that. He said, uh, we had 9 o'clock. That night I got my good, good clothes together. <laughs> got my stuff ready. I went down at like 8.45, walked in. 
And I'm glad I did because it was him, the OC, and the AD had just walked in and was talking to him about something at the time. He was walking out. And then we uh, I mean, we talked football for a little while and just talked how, my philosophy, my ideas about how I built the program. And then, then we got to some football stuff. And uh, me and the OC had some some of the same ideas. and. It went well. I mean, we, it was probably 35, 45 minutes. It went two or three hours. We just sit there and talk football and talk about my ideas and philosophy and stuff. And I went back. I think it was on a Wednesday, maybe. And I went back and uh, they said, we'll let you know something by next Wednesday because we got a couple more guys we want to talk to and all that. Friday morning, they called me and said, uh, we don't want to interview nobody else. We thank you, the guy, for the job. My OC told me I better get you now before something happened. And it worked out well. It went from there. Running backs? Running backs. Yeah. So when you think back, what do you remember about first coming to Arkansas? It was, a, it was amazing because when I came in, it rained like the first four days. And the first four days in office, it was one of those years where it was like uh, a little tough because we came in and we was trying to recruit kids in January and trying to get kids and running back and forth and recruiting and all that stuff. And then we finally got kids on campus and finally started practicing. The pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. first year was like, whoa. But, I mean... Everybody's going through the same thing. That's one of my things I always say. Everybody going through the same thing you're going through, so might as well fight through it. On second down, it's Sanders again. Left side at the 15, Rocket at the 10. Cuts back at the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, Arkansas. No flags this time. 20 yards to Bader. You guys had a great year. Uh, last year ran for more than 3,000 yards. Averaged over 230 yards a game. And what has been working for the running game and as a running backs coach, what do you have to have to, to have that working and be successful? I mean, you know, you, you teach the guys the stuff that you want to teach them about the alignment, the assignments, and where their eyes at and where their aiming points and all that stuff. But the biggest thing in my room is uh, they compete. I tell the guys all the time, they compete with each other. You don't wish bad on nobody, but you want to be better than them every play. So if you run for 10, you want to run for 15. You run for 15, you want to run for 20. You don't wish bad on nobody, but you want to be better. So. They always competing in practice. I don't have to, I tell them, I, I take stats in practice and tell them what they did, how good they did, and we talk about everything they do. So it's just, it's, they always competing. So that's a big thing for me. Obviously you gotta get the players, right? Mm -hmm. They gotta be good enough to play at this level. What are you looking for in recruiting of a running back? Uh, you have your stuff you look for uh, skill-wise. You look for change of direction. You look for short area quickness. You look for pad level. You look for speed and you look for um, balance, but when I start, I look at that stuff on film and I can go to the practice and see that stuff, but I don't really like you until I start talking to you and get to know you and figure out if you're going to compete. I want a guy who's going to go harder when it gets hard and want to compete and ain't scared to compete. So that's one of the biggest things for me is uh, I evaluate the film and see what I want to see first, but then once I start recruiting you, I want to get to know you as a person and get to know what's your background and, and if I can depend on you when it gets hard. What's the difference between being able to effectively run the ball and when it's not working? Is it balance? Is it, is it you got to open it up a little bit with being able to throw the ball? Is it, it can a be, lot of factors, right? But Yeah, it could be a combination. And, and if you want to be selfish, you'll say it's what you're doing, but sometimes it's them on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> so, so we don't ever want to give, yeah, we you know, especially them fans. Them. It's just yeah. like our team didn't do it right. Yeah, so um, it's a combination of figuring out uh, where's the weakness they have, if they have one, uh, what's the best scheme to run against them. And what you teach your guys is, you try to teach them early on, and what helped us a lot was, when we first got here, the linemen were learning too. And I was teaching the running backs certain things to look at, certain aiming points, and they was getting frustrated with it because it wasn't working. But I told them, as we get better as a team, those same aiming points, the same thing you're looking at, are get better. And they start seeing it, and they start developing it, and they start doing it, and it works. So once they get the trust and they do what you ask them to do and it works, then you can continue to build on that. Let's go back to how you got to Arkansas. Let's talk about your journey a little bit, but but what do you remember about taking the job here, getting the opportunity to come work with Coach Pittman at Arkansas? Man, it was a uh, it was a, a the day that he called me was great just because uh, it was a crazy situation because I was re recruiting a kid, a really good running back, and he was. Uh, I thought I had a good chance of getting him at Georgia State, and he ended up getting, going there. You were at Georgia State; you'd been mm -hmm. there a year. Yep, and it was going well. And uh, he called me. He uh, he asked me about, uh, did I know anything about Arkansas and would I be interested in, in ever working at Arkansas? And he didn't really tell me he had a job at the time, right? So uh, I was excited about it and I talked to uh, my wife about it. And uh, the funny thing was, after he offered me the job, 
Coach Pittman always called the wives and stuff. You know, he's that type of guy and, and invite you out and tell you that what the situation is. And my wife was talking slow, like uh, Arkansas. And she was playing around with it, but now it's a yeah. joke with him. Like, oh. I don't think she was too excited. I'm like, nah, Coach, she was excited. <laughs> Both of us was excited about it. Yeah. We already talked about it. Yeah. That's so, that's funny. Did you guys know each other previously? Oh, Coach Pittman? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah. know him well, man. Uh, I would go down to Georgia all the time when I was coaching high school ball, and uh, I was sitting in the rooms with him and the OC, and uh, we would always go over stuff. I was just – because I had guys that went down there and played there, and I would go to camp, work camps every year, and they would always say you – know, you know how coaches, we say we tell people, if you need anything, let me know. If you want to sit in on me, let me know. I would take advantage of it. You know, I would go to meet as much as possible. I would go to every camp. They might have four camps in a row. I drive back for everyone. It's 45 minutes an hour. So I really wanted to get better at my craft. That was mm-hmm. my thing. That was mm-hmm. my goal to get better at what I do. So uh, and it ended up turning to that. I'm a firm believer in be great at what you do and then opportunities to open, open up for you. How do you think it's gone since you've been at Arkansas? What's it been like from the, the Georgia State level to the SEC? Was that an adjustment period for you? Um, yeah. The funny thing about it, the expectations are higher for your team and for your position, but you have a lot more support and help at every level. Oh, yeah. So Interesting. people, people yeah. always ask me, like, uh, uh, how hard is it? How much time, more time is it? For me, the way I did it, it's not more time. It's <laughs> I can get more, even more detail because I can focus more. I mean, when you're a high school head coach, you got to cut the grass, you got to talk to I get certification straight. You got to get eligibility. You got to talk to teachers about this. You got to talk to you. You the counselor. You the academic advisor. You everything. So now I got all that. He, he, here I got all that. I got an academic advisor. I got therapist. I got a strength coach. I have to do all that. So now I can focus on football. Now you have to do it because you're playing against you're playing against the best coaches and the best competition. So you have to take the kids to another level. But the level of detail that I can get to here is like unbelievable. Like it's it's exciting. Like I can watch film and I can tell the guys almost what to expect in every situation. You can just get taught so detailed. It ain't just playing football no more. It's it's like a it's a science now. So you can take it to a whole another level. The concept of it is five yards or more. You hear coach say four yards. We don't want four. We want five yards or more. All right. Now you get five yards. Good. Don't think it'll be home every time. Five yards. Good. Sooner or later, the guy who got to tackle you gonna get he gonna mess up. All right. So what I'm saying is, right here. so the concept, think about it right here. You double the lineman, you run away from the backer, who got to tackle you? Safety. Every play we run, what we want to do? Get on safety one-on-one, right? <laughs> it's interesting, you know, just to think about your journey and, and making just a little bit of money Whew. and having to, to do everything to probably make it more money than you, you've ever made and having all the support. Yeah. Everybody wants to go right there. Yeah. They don't understand the journey and the work. You know, put in. What's it? What's it like for you to be living this life now, having been, you know, from there working your way all the way, and you earned all those steps? My wife always t- tell me that. She always laugh at me because I'm, um, um, I think I'm very frugal. They say I'm very cheap. Um, <laughs> I just, uh, I, I like, I like, I love what I do, and I. Uh, Coach Bonner, who was the head coach at City Grove when I got there, he always tell me, uh, you'll never work another day if you do something you love to do. It ain't work anymore. So I feel that way about coaching football. Like, I don't feel like it's work. I mean, of course, everybody's saying they deserve this and deserve that, but I love coaching football. And I love coaching football at the University of Arkansas. And I love working for Coach Pittman. So it's like a, I'm blessed with a lot of situations where there's no complaining from me. I, I, I love what I do. It's fun to me. You know I mean. Of course, you can get tired every now and then and all that stuff, but I love it. I love recruiting. I love seeing guys go from, from a guy like um, Rocket going from not playing running back to being one of the best running backs in the nation. I love seeing a kid who came from one situation where he was in an apartment with 10 people and it's a three bedroom to doing well enough where he can get it. He got a room of his own, a roommate in his apartment got his own room, his own bathroom. To, Next time he getting his own apartment and getting a car, and I love to see the process of it. So I, I believe in the process because I went through a process and I know the process works. If you just stay in the moment and work hard at where you at, everything else will be all right. Motion. Play clock's down under 10. They're going to give it to Rocket straight ahead. Big hole to midfield. Sanders to the 40. Rocket to the 30. To the 25. To the 20. Running away from the defense. He's going to score. Rocket into the end zone. Touchdown.
Touchdown, Arkansas, 68 yards. Wow. Tell me about Rocket Sanders. What's it like coaching him? It's, it's unbelievable, man. Like, it's, it's fun, and it's like uh, – like we, it's like we grew together, um, and he's he's the type of guy who we always said, and I think that coaching football is teaching football. So as a teacher, I always said you want a student who makes you be your best. He's gonna ask the questions. He's not gonna guess. He's not gonna. He believes that I know all, everything. You know what I'm saying? So he asks me anything at any time. So he makes you he makes you stay on top of your game, which I love. And he asks the questions. He's not afraid to ask. If he asks you 10 times, he don't care. If he, if he got any kind of adjustment, he want to know. And he's pushing himself so hard, like, at everything you do. He reminds me so much of myself, like, he's a perfectionist. And my mom will always get mad at me because I get mad. She said, you get mad about everything if it don't work because I'm a perfectionist. That's rocket. He want to he wanna be the best student. He want to be the best father. He want to be the best person. And he want to be the best football player. It ain't just best football player. It's all the other stuff before that. So he want to be the best at everything he do. And... I always tell them we got something I call the Goon Squad. So people always see it on there and they understand. They're like, what's Goon Squad stand for? It stands for something, I tell people. It stands for greatness on the field, off the field, no excuses. That's what it stands for. It ain't about being a goon and that stuff. That was, goon, you got to be great at everything you do, not just football, not just class. Socially, respect everything you do you want to be great at. Don't just go through the motions and do anything. Be great at everything you do. Good job there, man. I like when y'all compete. I like when y'all try to get better, man. I enjoy practicing, you know what I'm saying? That'll be good. Be great. One, two, three. Go squad. squad. Yeah, we all have a lot of gauges on the dashboard. Yeah. You can't, and they all got to work, right? They all got to work, because if not, if, yeah. if, 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 yeah, you got to balance. Yeah. Because what happens is, and I tell them all the time, when we, my first five minutes of every meeting, we talk about not football. I feel the same old, same old, man. Everybody good day at class? Good. So I say everybody good, all hearts and minds clear? Because I want you to be able to focus on what's next. But I want to know what happened today. Mm -hmm. How was the test? Are you upset with your girlfriend? Um, did your car have a, I want to get all that out of the way. How hard is it to get them there? Like you got a group here and everybody's like, they got some problem going on, but they don't want to say anything. It's hard, man. And what I do a lot of times is I say, okay, come on, let's go outside. Yeah. Once you get to know the kids, right. you know. You, you can just tell. They can yeah. walk in, I can look at them. Yeah. I can see Rashad walking in the door. I'm like, you all right, man? Yeah, I'm like, stay outside for a second. Guys, I'll be back. <laughs> I see AJ walk in. That's so good. Dumb. I mean, you can see the guy. You can see it in their face. You know, it's good that you do that, in my opinion. But also, I think just from your perspective, you're going to get more out of them, too. Oh, yeah. I mean. I mean, it's just part of what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, it, you can just be a football player or you can be this person. Yeah. And if, you're, if this person's, you know, everything they can be, then they're going to be the best football oh, player yeah. they can be. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's what it is. I mean, kids, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And if you do that and you really care, it helps anyway because it balances out their life. Because when they have a, a bad day in class, it won't make football bad. They have a bad day in football, it won't make class bad. Once you communicate and you balance it out, nothing can ruin your day because you got so much other stuff in, going on. Yeah. But once you just put all your eggs in one basket and you ain't got nothing else going on in your life, you can mess everything up. You can have a bad practice and now you don't want to go to class, you don't want to do your homework, you go home mad at your girlfriend, talking mad at, talking bad to her, your mom called, you got an attitude problem. No, you gotta have that balance. You gotta have that balance. So if you doing bad have a bad day at one thing, why be bad at everything? If you ain't run the ball well, you ain't gonna block either. Yeah. You can't catch yeah. no more? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna forget all the plays? Yeah. So it's about balance. That's good. What's um what are you looking forward to this season? I'm excited, man. I'm excited for the guys. I think that uh, I think that all the stuff we did on offense before was really good. I think that we did we had a great scheme before, but I think what we're doing now is even we added to it. People ask me what y'all doing differently. Um, I think we just add to what we had, and it's going to make the, prepare the guys for the future, and it gives the guys much more opportunities. Like run game wise, we got more schemes. Pass game wise, we got more schemes. KJ's mind opened up. Running rockets and the running back room, mine's opened up. More opportunities for the receivers. I'm excited about, I mean, I'm a running back coach, and sometimes I, I start looking at other positions in the offseason, start thinking, I mean, I'm a coach, so I want to win too. So I start looking at other stuff, and I see, I mean, defensively, we did a great job of recruiting and got great guys on defense. The D-line looks great. Linebacker's doing a great job. You go in the weight room, the guy's squatting. I mean, Bo Lemon squat 700 pounds yesterday.
700 wow. pounds. Wow. That's a lot of weight, man. So hey, the guys are working can hard. Can the bar man. hold 700 pounds? It almost didn't, man. It looked like it. So <laughs> I know I can't. <laughs> yeah, it's for for so, sure. I mean, so, I mean, the guys are working real hard. Um, the whole staff is doing a good job. I'm excited about the season, man. I mean, that's every year, but I'm, I'm just excited, man. So, Coach, when your time here is over with, you know, you've had a journey to this point. Who knows where it's going to go from here, but I, I know good things are, are going to happen just because of the way you approach things and who you are and, and, and the lens in which you see things. But, but how do you hope you leave this place? Whenever that is, when you leave, how do you hope people remember your time here? Man, uh, I want to just, uh, I don't want nobody to say I did a good job. I want to say I did a great job. Good ain't good enough for me. And that's just how I am. And my, my kids know it, my wife know it, the players know it. Good is not good enough. I always tell them good is the enemy of great. People get good at stuff, they get settled, they get happy with it. I don't want to be good at anything I do. I want to be great at it. And, and that's all around. That's not just coaching football. That's um, developing the players. That's not just recruiting. That's everything I do, I want to be great at it.